was a kind of a mathematical outlaw, a kind of a mathematical gangster. He was, he did things which were unlawful. First you separate and then you integrate. Just follow these steps and you will do great. First you separate and then you integrate. Just follow these steps and you will do great. First you separate and then you integrate. Just follow these steps and you will do great. Here's the season to be serving. When I was solving equations, I was feeling amazing. Calculus success. In this video, I want to outline the three things every student needs to do to be successful in calculus. So if you're watching this video, you probably understand the importance of calculus and how it is the foundation of a lot of the advanced math courses you will take in college. You know, when you first learn math, it was all about arithmetic. That was the foundational skill. And then as you got more advanced, algebra became the foundational skill. Well, now at this level, calculus becomes the foundational skill. And it's a very integral uh, subject when doing other math courses, such as differential equations, linear algebra, or even real and complex analysis. So it's tremendously important to have a very good conceptual understanding of calculus uh, to be successful in other math courses, particularly for those people majoring in STEM fields in college. So uh, let's look at the three things we need to do as a student to be successful in calculus. Number one, develop and strengthen your algebra and trig skills. So if you're someone who's going to be taking calculus either next year or next, next semester, uh, now's the time to strengthen uh, those algebra and trig skills, particularly trig. Uh, you, can, you can study and get an understanding of everything you really need to know about trig now. So it's very important to make sure you know the trig values for pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 6, or any other angle that has one of those angles as its reference angles. Also, of course, the quadrantal angles, 0 pi, uh, pi over 2, 2 pi, et cetera, or any, of course, angle that has that as, as a reference angle or a multiple of one of those angles. All those things you can start studying now, and those are things you need to know like the back of your hand. And you also need to know all your trig identities, sum difference, reciprocal, co-function, Pythagorean. You know, those are things you can study and, and get down. So when it's time for you to take calculus, if you haven't yet to do so, you know, I like the back of your hand. As far as algebra skills go, you know, quite honestly, in most algebra classes, the, the real algebra skills needed for calculus are not going to be brought out. Uh, there's an axiom most of us understand that most of the mistakes calculus students make in calculus is based off algebra. And to develop your algebra skills for calculus, a lot of that for very many students will be done in calculus. So that's not something per se that I think you can start right now because you don't know what type of algebra problems really to do that will prepare you for calculus. And so a lot of the, the type of algebra that's used in calculus uh, for a lot of people, you're just going to have to learn it while you're going through, through calculus and try to strengthen it there. There are many things that could be addressed in algebra, uh, but for whatever reason, a lot of algebra teachers don't address the type of algebra that's needed per se uh, to do implicit differentiation. Uh, that type of algebra is, is rarely touched on or is, is not significantly touched on in algebra classes, albeit you can, you can touch on it doing problems such as uh, finding inverse functions of a rational function could, will use the same type of algebra that is used in implicit differentiation. Also, uh, the type of algebra that's used in, you know, doing the quotient rule in calculus, particularly dealing with that minus sign in the numerator, you know, a lot of times in algebra, you do simplify polynomials and things of that sort, but not done to the level of where uh, people don't make that mistake with that minus sign when doing the quotient rule in calculus. So th those are just two examples. And, and typically what we see, uh, uh, we see uh, students in calculus with very sound algebraic skills, but some of the more tricky things we tend to do, uh, they have rarely uh, been exposed to. You know, and a hope of ours, of course, is that the algebra teachers would, would kind of 
expose them to these type of tricky problems. But, you know, you talk to an algebra teacher and they're having struggles just making sure students can solve uh, basic equations with uh, variables on both sides of the equal sign. And so so we understand their concern. So as calculus teachers, we understand uh, strengthening the algebra is something uh, that can go concurrently when doing the calculus. But the trig, that's really all the trig you need to know. Really, you could get all that down prior to taking the calculus class. So again, the first thing to do is strengthen and develop your trig and algebra skills. Uh, the number two thing is to uh, strive for a conceptual understanding. So this is very true in calculus. Uh, this is, you know, it gets more true when, when you're doing things like real and complex uh, analysis and, and doing algebra. And so when I, when I say algebra, I'm speaking of uh, what is maybe more technically called modern or abstract algebra. You know, those, those courses, you're not doing any computations. You know, it's really all based upon your your understanding of, of different theories and, and whatnot. So developing a conceptual understanding is tremendously important in calculus and the subjects, the courses uh, that follow. A very difficult thing uh, that I have as a calculus teacher is when trying, and even as a pre-calculus teacher, uh, when trying to show the conceptual foundation of certain things, say perhaps I'm teaching the law of cosines in pre-cal and how I teach the law of cosines, I don't just say, okay, here's the, here's the law of cosines formula. Go ahead and plug these numbers in and, and see what it spits out. You know, we, we set up a triangle and we develop and we derive uh, that particular formula and, and show why it works so they can understand stand that and that understanding of just that one example of say how we develop the law of cosine, cosines helps one understand how to find the angle between uh, two vectors, if you will. Uh, but what I have experienced is when I when I do such things, because students know at the very end of, of the discussion, uh, there's gonna be some formula that needs to be used. And a lot of students will kind of uh, uh, black out of the of us going over the deriving of how we get the formula and why we use the formula and just wait to oh there is the formula so now I can I can I can plug and play and to be a successful mathematician uh, uh, particularly in advanced uh, classes in high school and of course uh, the courses in in college you got to be beyond an algorithm genius one who can just plug numbers into a formula and, and let that formula spit out. You have to have a conceptual understanding of why certain things work. Because a, a lot of times what you'll see in calculus and many other advanced courses is you won't know if you don't have a very good conceptual understanding, you won't know what formula to use and when to use it. You won't know, is this a chain rule problem? Is is this a product rule problem? Is Is this integration by parts? Uh, is this a logarithmic substitution? And so to be able to decipher those things is based on your conceptual understanding. So many people uh, need to make that transition from being an algorithm genius, which probably got many of you through uh, middle school mathematics, maybe some of your more elementary high school math courses, but it's really not gonna cut it when you take courses uh, from calculus on. So really strive for a conceptual understanding when your teacher, when your professor is going over the conceptual foundations of whatever you're covering, covering, don't just gloss over that and forget about it. Understand that's a very critical and important piece to the puzzle and strive to understand that conceptual understanding. It's going to really benefit you particularly, again, if you're majoring in STEM fields and you're taking some other advanced mathematical courses later. Because again, a lot of the courses you'll take after calculus and differential equations, a lot of them aren't based on any type of calculations. Uh, they're based on uh, just applying uh, theory and these things uh, to, to very intricate mathematical ideas. So number two, strive to develop a conceptual understanding. And the, the la third and last thing I think every calculus student needs to do 
uh, to be successful in calculus and other math courses going forward. They just be confident and resilient. Be confident and resilient. So hopefully, if you're taking calculus, hopefully you're going to encounter a problem which is very difficult, a problem where you're not going to instantly know the answer. In fact, you're not even going to instantly know how to attack the problem. And what you have to do is think about everything you've covered. You're going to think about how you can attack the problem, what rule you can use. And maybe perhaps there's some obscure little algebraic trick that you have to use in order to be able to do the problem. And you want to be confident in your ability to solve a problem that doesn't instantly click to you and just give us some thought. As a, as a calculus student myself, uh, there were numerous occasions when I would have a problem and I would sit for hours and just think about how to start the problem. Like, what do I do? How do I even do the problem? What type of problem is it? And many of my classmates on those problems, they wouldn't even try. How do I know? Because the next day walking to class, there was a little little lounge area before a class that a lot of us would, would kind of congregate at. And every day when I would go in and, I, and we had a homework and I knew it was one or two problems that a lot of people wouldn't do, I would know every day walking to class that they were going to ask me about that particular problem. And I became better than them, not necessarily because I was smarter, but because I was resilient and I never gave up and I always believed in myself and I never stopped until I figured out how to work the problem. And because after time I knew they would be waiting on me. And so I built up this reputation of that I'm the guy that can solve the problem. I really couldn't, couldn't stop then because I didn't want to walk in and say, you know, I couldn't figure it out too. So the reputation was established and that pushed me every time that we had that. And generally it was one or, or two problems on the homework that almost seemed impossible. I would always just keep working and I would never give up. And that mentality of never giving up, being resilient, allowed me to solve pretty much all of those hard problems. It might have been one time I was unable to solve it, but most of the time I was able to solve those hard problems. And I never would have got there if I gave up. So be resilient. As you start to cover more advanced courses in your academic career, uh, whether it be in math and science or, or, or any other subject, uh, the stuff is not necessarily going to be just instantly easy. And so you have to have the work ethic and the confidence in self that, okay, this is not easy, but if, if I work at this, I can get this and be resilient to stick to it. You know, back in my day, I couldn't uh, put a solution in a computer when I was taking calculus and, and try to use Google or Wolfram Alpha or, or some of these other things to try to solve problems. Uh, I had to re just rely on myself. And if you take that same mentality, you know, though it may take some time, after a while, you'll start to see, oh, you know, I can solve this problem. If, you know, if I just sit and think about it, I will eventually get it. And uh, I promise you it's going to make you a better mathematician and it's going to make the subsequent courses you take a lot easier because you were resilient and you stayed fast and you found a way to solve the problem. So th that's the list for me. Those are the three things I believe students need to do to be successful in calculus strengthen and develop your algebra and trig skills, strive for a firm conceptual understanding, and be confident and resilient. We'll see you next time.